Hey guys, so I'm doing the peacock technique on this bowl and I filmed this first row and it didn't record. So I have to like redo the video. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show ya. Um, I made a line with a marker um, where I want just a rough line. Obviously, it's not the best line, but it's good enough. I use this throwing line here as the first line to follow with the V's or the, the U's. Um, I end up doing V's, but <clears throat> um, so I did the first row like that to the first line, the, the throwing line. And then I made a marker line and this will fire off. So don't worry about it. Um, the marker won't show up in the firing. Um, and then where's my handy dandy tool? I have a, uh, this is from, I don't know how to pronounce it. Xeem, Xeem, I don't know. It's Xeem Tools. Um, and so what I did was I filled this with light flux and there's different size applicator tips. And I chose like, I don't know, the one that I felt I wanted to use. Um, so now that the first row is dry here, I'm gonna start the second row of these with this thing. This is better because than using a paintbrush because I find when I use a paintbrush, it takes longer um, and I have to go over it, you know, more times to get a thick line. Whereas like a, a bottle or this type of tool just comes out really thick already. So I only have to do it once. Um, but my hand does get tired using this thing. You do want this row to be dry um, before you do this one because your hand's gonna end up hitting it and you mess it up. Um, this is just about dry, so I think I'll be okay. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and start the second line. I can't wait to see how this comes out. This is on standard 266 dark chocolate brown clay. So step one is to get the V's on here or the U's. All right, I'll be right back. Hi friends, 
Hi. Um, I wanted to show you the inspiration for this piece. So this is a peacock bowl that I did. And I did this on black clay, as you can see. But I wanted to improve upon this. So this is the same, this is um, jaded stroke and coat. And I really love that the jaded, the color that it came out. And I had used other peak, um, other stroke and coat colors in here, like a purple and a yellow. Um, and they didn't really like, I don't know, they're okay. But I really am digging this green. So this also has, so this just has two coats of sandstone over the whole thing. I'm sorry, three coats, Mako sandstone. And what, I, what I'm not crazy about is that it's very rough. The, the feel of this, cause it's, it's a matte kind of glaze. And you can kind of see on the outside, I only used um, two coats on the outside but um, it's, it's just rough. It's very rough to the touch and I don't like that. I want it to be smooth. Um, so my plan is to try to modify this. Um, in this bowl, I'm using standard 266 brown clay, which is similar to the black, but not entirely. Um, but I believe that this green, um, jaded color is going to look amazing on the dark chocolate brown clay. So that's why I did meet mostly, um, all of it I did in this stroke and coat color. So I've got my flux lines and then the jaded stroke and coat. And I, I didn't do dots, I did triangles because I wanted to get more of that color instead of like a small circle. Um, and on the outside, it's an experiment, right? So on the outside, I did two times of that stroke and coat jaded in the, in the triangles. So I just want that color to be more prominent. So the other thing is I'm going to try I was trying to think of a glaze to use that would like underneath the, um, oh my gosh, underneath this glaze that I used on this bowl to get that shininess. Like I believe that if I, I put this on top of something else or vice versa, like a shinier glaze, it might um, become more shiny and less matte. Uh, and less rough. So sandstone. So the sandstone, I, I came up with oatmeal to put oatmeal underneath the sandstone. That's just like a thought I had. Um, Cause it's kind of a similar undertone. So we'll see what happens. So my plan is to do the oatmeal and then the sandstone and hope for the best. Um, that was a lot, but I just wanted to show you like what I'm trying to achieve. I love this bowl, don't get me wrong, but I believe we can modify it to make it perfect. And that's all she wrote. All right, see what happens, I'm excited.
second coat of sandstone. Hi friends, here's the final piece to the left here is the uh, 266 standard clay body and this is just with the jaded which turned almost purple. See those striations? And then this one, the inspirational piece on the black clay had Honeydew list, all stroke and coats, honeydew list, jaded, and leaping and lizard. And this did not have the oatmeal, it just had sandstone. So, what do you think? Honestly, I wasn't too crazy about this, so I might reglaze it. What do you guys think? Should I reglaze it or should I just leave it alone? So I wanted to also just show you the difference between the two clay bodies. So that's this, oop, that's the uh, 266 standard brown, and that's the black clay. They're very similar, but there's definitely a difference. Kind of cool. I'm just not sure, like, how I feel about this one. I need to, like, snuggle with it for a few weeks before I decide if I'm going to, like, refire that. I don't know. Somebody might like it. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this piece and if you would reglaze it. Um, and I hope you found the video helpful in applying flux and doing the peacock technique. There's so many variations um, that you can do. So um, that's it. It's Memorial Day weekend. And I'm wishing you all a wonderful, beautiful, hopefully long holiday weekend.